Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week and these are prepared by the assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hello and welcome to this workshop. My name is Adham and today we will dive into measuring environmental readings and storing them on Google Sheets and the Arduino Cloud. We'll be using the Arduino IDE, Wishing Box API, Google Sheets and the Arduino Cloud. First off, we will learn how to read the readings of the sensor, then upload those readings onto Google Sheets. And finally, add those readings onto the cloud as well to help in real-time data monitoring. So before we dive into this workshop, let me tell you about the assembly. The assembly is a smart lab based out of N5 since December of 2014. We have conducted over 300 workshops since then. These are divided into three categories. First one is hack, which contains embedded systems, IoT, and hardware. Second one is code, which relates to APIs, frameworks, and applications. And then finally, we have data sciences, which relate to advanced topics such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. Our targeted audience for these workshops are students, professionals, and entrepreneurs, but most importantly, anyone who is eager to learn about technology. We focus on smart technology and practical applications. You can keep in touch with us on our forum on members.theassembly.ae. We're also active on social media. And, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now, let me give you an overview of today's workshop. The workshop will be divided into two parts. The first section, we're going to record the temperature, humidity of our surrounding, and then upload that data onto Google Sheet using an API. This will involve the setup of the breadboard and the Arduino MKR board on the code. On the code. At the second section, we're going to upload the same code onto the online Arduino Cloud IDE to monitor the data using the Arduino IoT Cloud as well. This will help in checking on in real time using a simple interface. So why Arduino? Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software. It is a great tool for developing interactive objects. It's easy to use and learn, and it can also take inputs from switches and sensors. And it can be used to develop simple standalone projects or even complex ones. And the reason we use Arduino Cloud is the fact that you can connect multiple devices to each other and allow them to exchange real time data and they can also monitor them from anywhere using a simple user interface. So what we need for today's workshop, we need an Arduino MKR 1010 board, a DHT 11 temperature and humidity sensor, some jumper wires, breadboard, and the Arduino IDE. Uh, so for the steps, we'll first start with the hardware setup. We will then proceed to set up the Google Sheet and the Pushing Box API. We will then write the code on the Arduino IDE to upload the data on Google Sheet. And then uh, we move on to phase two to set up the Ardu our Arduino cloud and our dashboard to monitor the changes in the, in the environmental readings in real time. So let's get started. So, all right, so first we put in our DHT11 sensor onto the breadboard. It has three pins, the five volts, the, the data pin, and the ground pin. So let's connect each one of them. So first one is the VCC or the five volt pin. And we connected that to the five volt pin on the MQR board. Next, we connect the data pin into our third pin on the board. This is actually very important because we're gonna use that in our code. Onto the third pin. And then finally, we connect the ground pin to the ground pin on the board. And yeah, that's, that's all the code, that, that's all the hardware that we're actually doing for today. All right, so now that we're done with the connection part, let's go ahead and set up our Google Sheet. First, we can rename it into something more useful. I've already done that. I've called it the assembly readings. And then after that, we need to save our spreadsheet ID. This is the portion of the URL that comes after the backslash D and ends, after, ends at the backslash edit. So it's this section right here. We need to copy that and save it. And then let's code our first part, the Google script. So let's head on to tools and script editor. And then uh, when developing, 
So for our script to be published as a web app, it needs either a do get function or a do post function. So let's get ahead, let's go ahead and do that. So we will go with do get. And then with, when developing any kind of application, you want to log information to help diagnose uh, faults during development. So it will basically act as a, our debugger. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll use logger log.json. And then we have our result, save it. And then if it's undefined, we save result as else. We'll have our ID, the spreadsheet ID, the one that we copied. We'll paste that. And then we'll have our sheet. So it'll be spreadsheet app dot open by ID. Our ID dot get active sheet to get which sheet that we're on. Then to get our row, Can we add one to that, and this is our data which we will save. All right, so first we will save in the first column, which is column A. The date, and then we will have a for loop. We have one log to know that we're inside the for loop. And then our value will be. So we're going to code in a function that will remove any trailing double or single quotations. We we'll do that at the end. All right, good. Uh, then we have a switch case. And the switch case will actually identify what type of data it is and then fill it accordingly. So if it's humidity, then we'll save it in row in column B. Value. Then break. If it's... Uh, Cell data. Any other kind of values unacceptable, so result will be unsupported parameter. All right. So now that we're done with the switch case and we're done with the for loop, let's go ahead and do one more logger. Now that, now that we're inside. Log data. And then we'll have the new range. And then we set that, so set values. So now that we're done outside the else. So now we're inside the do get function and the do get function should return either an HTML service, HTML output object or a content service text output object. So to return the result of our operation, so we do return content service 
dot create text output of our result. And then so now that now that we're done, let's go ahead and uh, code in our function. So function remove codes, the one that we discussed earlier, which will remove leading and trailing single or double quotations, picks a value and it returns value dot replace. or all right and then we were done with the with the script so let's go ahead and deploy it new deployment choose a type web app give access to anyone see it as myself and then deploy we wait for it so uh this url the script is very important you have to copy that and we're done so now let's move on to the pushing box api all right, uh, so moving on to pushingbox.com, I, I will use this as our API. First, we'll head on over to my services. We'll add a new service. We'll scroll all the way down to custom URL and we select this service. We'll give it a name, so assembly readings, and then we'll paste our URL, the same one that we copied from the deployment uh, step. And then since our method is get, we head on and press submit. Then we move on to my scenarios. And then we make a new scenario. So let's call it assembly readings scenario. And then we add it. Then we'll add an action to it using our scenario that, that we just made, which is the assembly reading. And then we'll get this box. So uh, this data box will open asking for your get or post method. And since we use the get method, we'll use the question mark. And then uh, we need to link our variable names listed in our script to the names listed in our in our Arduino sketch. And then we also need to format it in the same correct way to accomplish this. So uh, I'll go ahead and just and copy paste it. It's like this. So basically our humidity data is in this and it should be in this format. So it'll be the same for our humidity, for our Celsius data and our Fahrenheit data. Then we go ahead and press submit. And we're done. Let's move on to our Arduino IDE. So moving on to our Arduino sketch, we have our IDE right here. First off, we need to make sure that, that we're using the correct board and port. And you can check that right here. We go to uh, tools. It's correct board, MQR Wi-Fi 1010, and the correct port. Next, we need to make sure that we have our libraries installed. We need Wi-Fi Nina and DHT. So, and here we go to tools, manage libraries, and in case that you don't have them installed, you can search for them and install them right here. It's installed and DHT. DHT sensors. All right, good. Uh, we also have an Arduino Secrets header file that contains our Wi-Fi SSID and password. The SSID is just the Wi-Fi name. So make sure to have a similar header file and to include your own Wi-Fi details onto it. Now that now that we're all set up, let's see what this code does and what we'll add to it to make it functional. So first, we have a temporary status. And that's assigned when Wi-Fi.begin is called until the connection is established and secure. And then moving on, we have our Wi-Fi client and the website, which is our API server. And we also have our DHT pin. This is the pin that we connected the data to and our device ID, which can be obtained from right over here in our scenarios, our device ID. Let's just go ahead and paste that here. And then moving on to the DHT type. 
uh, since this is a DH11 sensor, we have 11, but it could also be 22 or 33 based on the type of sensor that you use. All right, so in our setup, we attempt to connect to the network and the wireless, con the, the WL connected is assigned when it is successfully connected, which exits out of this loop. And if the connection is successful, it, it attempts to connect to the pushing box website. Uh, and if it is successful, it prints you connected to the network. And if and if this is successful as well, the connection to the uh, pushing box website it it prints connected to server. Then a, then an HTTP 1.1 request is made, which we where we also have to fill in our device ID right over here to complete the request and send in the data. So now let's go ahead and code this part ourselves: the reading of the sensor data and the measurements. So first, we need to put in our delay, which is how long between each measurement. So let's go ahead and put, add in five seconds. Then let's add in the readings themselves. So load humidity data is dht.readhumidity, which reads in the humidity. Next, we'll add in the Celsius float cell data. DH, it's important to make sure that these are the same names or the, the ones in the script. DHT.read temperature. And since it's read by uh, to Celsius by default, uh, if you want to change that and make it Fahrenheit, we need to add in the temperature. We need to add in the, the true parameter. And then we also need to check if there is any if any reads failed and we can we can also then exit early so if is non humidity data or is non cell data or is non fahrenheit data We'll, we'll print be able to read from the HD sensor then return to exit early. Now let's go ahead and uh, print the actual values, the ones that we get. So humidity. Then humidity data now this this will be temperature this will be some data Resources. All right, so moving on, uh, if you get a connection, then you have to report it back. And then the, this is the API service that uses the Wi-Fi client through pushing box, then relays it to onto Google Sheets. So let, let's add in our part. So uh, after we get uh, the humidity data, we need to add it. So string humidity data. And then here, string cell data. And then here, string uh, Data. All right, now uh, this is the, the final uh, final setup. If everything is correct, let's test it out. Uh, let's go to our
It's done uploading. Let's go. Let's check it. It's connecting. It's connected. All right, let's check the readings. They're getting added every five seconds. All right, so great. Uh, our code works. Now let's move on. Let's wait for one more. Perfect. All right, so uh, great. This works. Now let's move on to the Arduino cloud setup and the final part of our project. Now that we finished this, we can move on to our final part of the workshop, the Arduino cloud. I create an account if you already don't have one and let and let's get started first let's create a thing after you after you create one you're prompted with three different things variables devices and networks uh let's get uh, get started with the device set up new device arduino device since this actually takes a couple of minutes to configure i'm gonna skip this step and go ahead with my ready-made device and associate Yes, uh, in case it asks you to install Arduino create throughout the setup process of the device, just head on over to create.arduino.cc slash getting started. It's very simple and pretty straightforward to follow along with the instructions. Uh, so moving back, let's uh, add our variables. So T1 type float for our temperature in Celsius. Let's add T2 type float. For our temperature in Fahrenheit, let's add uh, let's add H for humidity. Type float, and let's configure our network. It's the same credentials that we use in the secrets header file inside the uh, Arduino cloud Arduino IDE. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to sketch. As you can see, sketch is already pre-generated with the variables and everything. Uh, in fact, it's actually the same, if not very similar to what we're going to use. Uh, it's the same code as the IDE itself, only with a couple of uh, extra things such as init properties and the Arduino cloud.begin statement, as well as the Arduino cloud.update. Cloud These are exclusive to the Arduino cloud themselves. Everything else is exactly the same. So before we get started on the on the sketch code, let's go ahead to add the dashboard and build our own. So uh, first, let's add widgets, which will be what we see throughout our interface. So let's add the first one, temperature, let's call it in Celsius. And then we'll have to link it to the variable. So T1 and done. Let's add another one. Let's call it temp f for Fahrenheit. Let's link it. T2. Done. Let's add percentage. Humidity. Link it. With H. And done. You can actually also arrange the widgets in, in the grid and play along with them however you want to make sure whichever order you like, as well as their size and whatnot. But uh, for, for now, let's just skip that and let's go back to our sketch. So like I said, the code itself is very similar. Uh, so let's go ahead to, the, to our IDE and uh, copy the code. Copy. And let's paste it here. Uh, let's just leave those in here and paste. Uh, since our secrets uh, header file was locally accessed, it's no longer there. We'll have to uh, manually type in our SSID and password. So let's do that, SSID.
and then next here we will add init properties then arduino cloud dot begin arduino arduino iot preferred connection and then uh, here let's add arduino cloud dot update and then here finally let's link our variables so h is dh dht dot and then t1 for our celsius it's dht dot read temperature and for our Fahrenheit that's DHT dot the temperature true and we're done that's verify and test it uploading all right connecting We're connected So data is being sent everything's all good uh let's go ahead and check here this will actually take a couple of minutes for the first time to refresh uh so let's give it some time and uh, uh let's wait for it and here we go the actual readings temperature in celsius and fahrenheit and humidity uh like i said uh they also the uh the Google Sheet works, but since I already showed that in the first and the second part of the of the workshop, uh, there is no need to go over it again. And uh, yeah, that's everything you need to know to to connect to measure your uh, your readings using the uh, your Google Sheets and using the Arduino Cloud. And that's the end of our workshop. So that's it for today's workshop. If you enjoyed, consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And to stay up to date with more of our content, you can follow us on our social media. Thanks for watching.